We're going to kick off the video with the pedal box installation. Uh, here you can see I've um, got the pedals installed and uh, drilling out the little brackets there for the brake switch as well as the clutch switch. Uh, those did prove to be a bit of a bear, um, getting them adjusted later on in the installation. Um, the switch has a very kind of narrow bandwidth in terms of when it engages and disengages, so that was a little bit of a challenge. I had a hard time lining that up, but um, I actually don't know if that shows up in the video, but just a note. Uh, the uh, pedal box, uh, the pedal assembly installation into the car went great. Um, marking up the brackets, uh, or the location for the brackets, drilling them out. Uh, everything went uh, went nicely there. Before you put these brackets in that support the pedal box, I would go ahead and deburr all the edges. Just run a die grinder or sandpaper or uh, a deburr along uh, the edges. They're, they're actually quite sharp. And if you think about after this thing is installed, any service work that needs to be done up underneath here, you're going to be reaching past these parts. So I would um, I would take this opportunity to clean that up before it gets installed. I would uh, take this opportunity to do a walkthrough of where I'm currently at. Um, I've had some good time here over the past uh, week and a half, almost two weeks now. Uh, about two weeks, actually, of working on the car. Uh, nights, weekends, that kind of stuff. Uh, loaded all sorts of new car energy, I guess. Um, so let's do a quick walk around. I'll show you what I've done. And again, um, if you see anything wrong, please feel free to, to put it in the comments. Uh, I am not a mechanic, and uh, undoubtedly there are some, probably some mistakes here. Hopefully none of them are catastrophic. Uh, but let's, let's uh, get to, uh, let's get to where we are. Uh, I've got aluminum in place, shipped it to the aluminum while I'm waiting for some extra parts. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you've done this before, I'm sure many of you have, but if you haven't, the aluminum is very satisfying. Instant gratification. Everything goes together nice, uh, nicely. Um, all the cuts are clean. I got to hand it to Factory 5 for doing a great job. I haven't had to make a single trim or any adjustment. Um, so definitely having fun with that. Just got the 
pedal box in, uh, all the parts associated with that. Unfortunately, missing a clutch quadrant. They're trying to find that. It was supposed to have shipped with my kit and it did not. We'll figure that out. Not a biggie. So when it came time to do the gas tank setup and installation, I was uh, admittedly a little nervous. Um, I, I could, you know, first of all, I've never done anything like this, but second of all, I can envision a, a mistake here being um, a really bad place to make, make a mistake, you know, likely ending in fire and, and or explosion. Uh, but I followed the manual step by step, worked out well, no issues. Actually, once I kind of got into it, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, I used um, uh, an Aeromotive in-tank fuel pump um, from Mike Forte, uh, per his recommendation to match up with the motor I'm running. Uh, that went in nicely. Uh, all in all, um, a pretty straightforward installation. And as you can see here shortly, um, the manual does say grab a friend when uh, it's time to install the tank. And, and I could see why that would be beneficial. But like I mentioned before, I'm doing this usually late nights and I'm solo and I get creative. So you'll see here once again, I'm using a little help from... Uh, uh, some some straps here, a little extra mechanical advantage. That third arm, fourth arm that's needed, uh, it worked okay. Um, the uh, the tricky part really, I think, was getting the bolts to go through the straps. You know, they in the manual and and some of the videos online, they show the bolts sliding right through the the little bent over part on the end of the strap. Um, the gas tank straps, and that's just not the case. It's it's a it's beyond an interference fit. You essentially have to screw these bolts through that opening, and that took some work. Uh, I tried to file the opening larger, that didn't didn't pan out. But eventually, they 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 found their way through, and I got the tank installed. Well, here I go. This is officially my first deviation from the Factory Five um, manual. Um, first of many, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of things about this build that are, are atypical. Um, and this is the first step. Uh, so let's see if I can make this camera thing work right. Uh, I'm going to move the battery inboard into this kind of gap there between the um, pumpkin for the IRS and above the gas tank, that little gap there. Uh, I'm going to build a, a steel frame that the battery will slide into and uh, that will buy me all my most of my trunk space back. Uh, not a lot of trunk space to begin with obviously. Uh, I don't want to locate the battery up front. I know many do and it, it's a good solution. Uh, I've got other plans for that space up front so this is going to be the best bet. Uh, so here we go. When I uh, started out building the battery box, my biggest concern was how much weight this is going to have to support. Batteries are obviously very heavy, um, but not only that, considering the environment that it's going into, it's a very dynamic environment. Um, it's a car, and it's a car with a fairly stiff suspension, and it's a, and the particular location here is right over the rear axle, so uh, this had to be strong enough to deal with um, quite a bit of movement. I ended up using some stock I had laying around my shop, and it was a three-quarter by one and a half inch um, square stock. I, I'm guessing around 16 gauge, a little thin, little thin to work with in terms of welding, kind of a kind of a pain. Um, I, it was also unfortunately galvanized. Now looking back on this, I would have, I, I should have used a different, I should have used better stock. Um, clean new stock as opposed to having to clean up this uh, galvanized material. Uh, in the end, it, it it welded okay and not the cleanest welds I've done, but um, certainly strong enough and after a little grinding, um, got the welds to a point where they painted up cleanly. You'll also notice that I'm putting in a clamp arrangement here. I used a couple of rib nuts um, to bolt uh, a bar that goes across to support the battery. 
It's important to note, too, that the battery is accessible from the inside of the trunk. It'll slide in and out of this location, which is primarily why I'm, I've designed my own drop trunk. I will not be um, using an off-the-shelf drop trunk, and that's, this, is, that's, this is the primary reason as to why. A uh, little paint, and uh, next step is to slide it into the car and bolt it in place. Um, let's hope my measurements panned out. And let me see if I can find some good battery box building music to, to finish this build up. Coming up in the next video, you'll see brake line installation. Uh, you'll get to see probably some more aluminum panels going into place and construction of my custom drop trunk. I believe I'll be able to fit all that in the next one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.